Hey guys, welcome back. I hope you're having an amazing day. Let's get right into the stories. The first one is an entitled people story. My family has owned a large plot of private forest land for generations. It's been passed down ever since my great-great-grandfather settled in this area over a century ago. He fell in love with the lush, rolling hills and towering pines. A pristine wilderness perfect for logging and hunting. When he died, the land was passed on to his son, and so on down the family line. Now my father left it to me when he passed away last year. I was an only child and had fond memories of camping and fishing on our land as a kid. Even though I now lived in the city for work, I made it a point to visit a few times a year. The property was special to me, a peaceful escape from the noise and crowds. Last fall, I decided to take a trip to hike the trails and enjoy the changing leaves. As I bounced down the old dirt road leading to our cabin, I was stunned to see a sprawling mansion nestled at the edge of the cleared woods. I slammed on the brakes, thinking I must have taken a wrong turn, but the familiar bends in the road told me I was in the right place. Confused and annoyed, I got out and walked up the paved driveway to this enormous house. It looked like something out of MTV Cribs. We're talking fountains, tennis courts, even a pool house bigger than my actual house. Who the hell built this monstrosity on our land? I rang the massive doorbell, and a blonde woman in yoga pants and a cropped fur coat answered. Can I help you? She asked in a snotty tone. Yeah, you can tell me what you're doing building this giant house on my property, I said. She looked at me like I had three heads. Excuse me? This is my land. I bought it fair and square six months ago. I'm sorry to tell you, but you've been misled. This is private land belonging to my family, I informed her. So I'll be needing you to vacate the premises immediately. Now it was her turn to look bewildered. Clearly there's been some mistake, she huffed. I paid three million dollars for this parcel. I saw the deed myself. I tried to remain calm. Well, I assure you, the person who sold it to you did not own this land. I have the original deed signed by my great-great-grandfather. I can show you if you want. She waved her hand dismissively. Don't be ridiculous. The broker I used is highly reputable. He wouldn't make that kind of mistake. I was quickly losing patience with this woman. Three million dollars for a legally built mansion? On my family's ancestral land? Oh, hell no. Listen, I'm trying to be civil here, I said sharply. But this property belongs to me and you're trespassing. Tell me who this broker is so I can set things straight, or I'll be forced to call the authorities. The woman's expression soured. She clearly wasn't used to being told no. How dare you threaten me, she snapped. Do you have any idea who I am? I shrugged. Don't really care who you are. You're still on my land. She stabbed her finger into my chest. I'm Catherine Ross, founder of Ross Real Estate Investments. My husband is State Senator Charles Ross. We are pillars of this community. I swatted her hand away. Again, lady, I don't care. Now give me a name before I call the cops. Catherine's face reddened. The only person who will be needing the cops is you after I have you arrested for trespassing and harassment, she shrieked. This is absolutely absurd. Edmund, Edmund. A muscular man in a polo shirt came jogging up. What's wrong, honey? She pointed at me. This lunatic is claiming we're on his land and threatening to call the police. Can you believe this nonsense? The husband balled his fists. Listen, buddy, I don't know who the hell you think you are, but nobody messes with my wife. You better get the hell out of here before things get ugly. I stood my ground. I have every right to be here. This is my property, but if you won't leave voluntarily, I'm calling the county sheriff. I dialed the sheriff's office right on the spot. After describing the situation, they assured me an officer was on the way. Catherine's cocky attitude evaporated instantly. She tried pleading with me to hang up, insisting there was no need to get law enforcement involved. But I ignored her frantic apologies. Within ten minutes, a squad car came bumping up the dirt road. Two uniformed officers stepped out, looking puzzled. I recounted the story again while Catherine and her husband shouted shrill objections. But once I produced the deed, the cops turned stern. Ma'am, if this man has valid documentation, you are unlawfully occupying his private property, the older officer said. This is outrageous, Catherine shrieked. I want to speak to your supervisor immediately. The younger cop shook his head. Ma'am, threatening us will only make this worse. Now we can sort this out down at the station, but you need to vacate this residence today. The entitled socialite looked ready to burst, but with two cops standing there, she had no choice but to pack her things and leave quietly. 
This is unbelievable, she kept muttering. He's going to hear from our lawyers. This hick doesn't know who he's messing with. I chuckled. Pretty sure I'm not the one who made a $3 million mistake. Good luck getting your money back. The husband gave me a murderous stare, but didn't dare make a move in front of the deputies. After the cops drove off, I surveyed the ridiculous mansion sitting there on my property. I considered moving into it myself just to piss off the Karens. But truthfully, the house didn't fit the land at all. This was still a pristine wilderness, not some millionaire's playground. So I called up a buddy who ran a demolition company. For a good price, he agreed to bring out his excavator and bulldozer to raise the place. Watching that ludicrous mansion come crashing down was more satisfying than my college graduation day. I had the rubble hauled off to the dump. Then I planted some saplings around the now empty clearing, a new generation for the generations to come. The Karens did threaten me with lawsuits for a while, but their lawyer informed them they didn't have a leg to stand on. I heard through the small town grapevine that they moved a few towns over, no doubt looking for their next victim. But I didn't feel too bad. The look on their faces when those cops showed up was priceless enough to make up for the trouble. <laughs> this land has been in my family for over a hundred years, and if I have anything to say about it, it'll stay that way for a hundred more. Karens and their shady brokers won't be getting their entitled hands on it anytime soon. As long as I'm still breathing, this little piece of wilderness will remain. The next one is a pro-revenge story. Okay, this happened years ago, 1985 to be exact. I was 45 when this happened, 81 now. So after my second retirement, I started doing property management. I bought this 2,500 square foot luxury home and with the sole intention of renting it out. Now I didn't know how bad the homeowner association was, but when I became the owner, I soon found out. This all took place in two years' time. Karen would literally have a problem with everyone in the neighborhood. Trash cans left out? Fined. Loud music after 10 p.m.? Fined yard sale without permission? Fine. Removing dead plants and replanting without approval? You get fined. It went on and on like this. Now the community could run for the homeowner association board, but the homeowner association board chose the president. Six out of the ten members on the board liked Karen, so she always kept her job. Her husband was in the medical field, so he made a lot of money. It got to a point, too, where she was called Queen Karen in the neighborhood, and her dishing out homeowner association fines. No now I used to go in person to collect the rent because the people that rented my house were good friends of mine. I did this for months. So I would park my car by the front of the garage. I and my friends were having some music on, but it wasn't that loud. Queen Karen came over driving her golf cart and said, Queen Karen, excuse me? Me. Yeah? Queen Karen, you have to turn that music down, it's too loud. I told her that it was 8 p.m. and that music that's even loud can be played until 10. She wasn't having it and demanded that I do so. Now my friends and I kept the music going and we were enjoying ourselves. She proceeded to get angry and fined me. Now most people will just take the abuse and pay the fine, but not me. I went to the homeowner association board, contested the fine, and won. From that point on, Queen Karen made it her personal mission to destroy me. She would idiot and fuss about every little thing. I fought what I could, but I did end up paying for some of it. She also went after my tenants, which made things worse for me. I had to sit down with my friends one night to discuss the problem. When I parked my car, Queen Karen came over in her robe and said I have to park somewhere else. I did because I didn't want to start anything. We see her go back into her house and embrace a man that isn't her husband. We were being noisy and we came to the conclusion that she was cheating on her husband. Spoiler alert, she was. My friends and I told Queen Karen's husband. I'm sure he did some investigation because three months later they divorced and he was moving his stuff out. Now gossip said that Queen Karen got nothing because she was the one that cheated and she didn't have a job, so she wasn't entitled to the money. From this point on, Queen Karen had a massive decline in the quality of life that she had. She sold her car and got a cheaper one and she adopted different dressing habits. But even after the divorce, she never got a job and she was still living somewhat better than everyone else. Fast forward to 1986 in February, Queen Karen and the Homeowner Association had been giving out fines for very obscure things and increased monthly dues. Having trash cans out a couple of hours early or after the trash man left would result in a fine. Targeting people that had older or dirty cars goes on and on. Me and the other people, the community, were sick of the crap that she and the Homeowner Association were pulling. So at the next meeting, we made out voices our concerns. No. Queen Karen said that the community had been falling behind on repairs and that the dues and increase in fines were necessary, especially if people weren't maintaining their own property. She said that it was in the yearly budget report and that we should have read it. The other pissed residents and I go and read the statement. 
Now, none of us read it because we take it as a junk mail and disregard it, but we read the whole statement cover to cover. Queen had increased the homeowner association budget 15%, and where that extra money was going remained unknown. We went over to her house the next day and demanded to know where the extra money was being spent, but she refused several times. She closed the door and went back to watching TV, we filing a joint lawsuit to find out where the money was going. In June, we found out. Cue the revenge. Queen Karen was living off homeowner association fines and dues. The increase is because she was running out of money. She still didn't have a job, so she embezzled from the homeowner association so she wouldn't have to get a job. She gets busted. We call the police for her embezzling the money. She was charged with fraud and extortion. The neighbors and I filed a joint lawsuit against Karen to get reimbursement as well, because she had no money so she had to mortgage her house to pay us all. She later went to federal prison for six years with no parole. Because she went away, no one was paying on her house. The bank foreclosed on it, and it was bought by someone else. So when she got out in 1992, she was homeless. No, Honestly, the majority of us didn't want to ruin her life like this. Had she toned down the excessive fines, we would have let her be. But she had to double down and steal from us because she didn't want to get a job like everyone else. The next one is a petty revenge story. When my kids were preschoolers, we spent every summer morning at the pool. I had a bag full of toys that I took with us so that they could keep themselves amused. In about the July, a mom and her preschooler started coming to the pool. My kids were cool sharing their toys, since this kid had none with him. Cool, that is, until after about two weeks, he started demanding my kids special toys that they were playing with. The entitled mom looks up from her book and starts berating my children for being mean and not sharing. She tells them to give their toys to her son. I reached over and took her book. When she asked me what on earth I was doing, and told me to give it back to her, I responded with her own words. Why was she being so mean? She should share. She lost her mind. I just kept on responding that what is good for adults is good for kids, so if she believes my kids are not entitled to the private use of their own property, and are mandated to share with others, then she believes the same goes for her. She couldn't have it both ways. I asked her to choose a way she wanted to live. She packed up in a huff, and we never saw her again. The next one is a malicious compliance story. So I work for a large electronics company doing sales over the phone. We get a lot of calls daily and take credit card details to place orders as well as place finance orders. Since fraud is such a big deal, our company were taught that only the account holder for the CC or finance account can place an order. Q Karen calling to place an order for finance, go through everything, get her name slash address slash number and payment details. Just before I place the order, she goes, oh, the card's in my dad's name. That's fine, right? I tell her no. Her dad needs to place the order as he's the account holder. Cue her arguing for about five mins how she's his daughter, and I need to finalize this order now. I tell her I'm sorry, but I can't do that. As I've mentioned, the account holder needs to place the order. She started cussing me out, calls me a stupid ducking idiot, and that I know nothing and demands I place the order. I've had enough at this point. Since she started swearing and getting aggressive, I said, I'm sorry, but if you continue to speak to me in such a manner, I will terminate this call. Customer says, well, terminate it then. So I did with a, okay, then thank you for calling, have a nice day. I heard her go, no wait, as I hung up on her. God, that felt good. The next one is an entitled people story. My 30F husband, 27M, and I live in a closed street of small houses. Each house has a parking spot, plus most people owning more than one car park in parallel in front of their house. We didn't own a car because we both worked from home and hate driving, plus public transport here is not so bad. We have a neighbor who owns three cars so obviously he has no space to park them all at his house. He asked our next-door neighbor, we can call him Anne, if he could park outside of her house. She also does not drive. And she said yes, but Ian, in order to not block his other car, parks all the way in front of my driveway. TBH, I would not have minded if he had asked, but the fact that he just does it annoys me. Also, my family comes to visit often, and if they come by car, he usually is blocking and we have to ask him to move, and every time he gets mad as if we were asking for a favor. Anyway, I got a nice promotion that involved in-person work three times a week, so we decided it was time to get a car. We bought a nice practical one and got it in our park space. Well, next morning, the guy was blocking my exit. I rang his doorbell like crazy. It was 6 a.m., and when he finally came out, I asked him to move and to not park there anymore. He got defensive and said that my neighbor let him park in front of her house, to what I answered yes, but this is my house, and if you block my entrance again, I'm going to remove your car. 
He moves and the next day he is blocking again. We realize he left the car open so we let the handbrake loose and push the car to the middle of the street, in front of his driveway. I put a note on his windshield saying next time it's a tow truck, put tape over his doorbell so it continues ringing, and I left as quickly as I could. He hasn't said anything, but he hasn't parked there anymore. The next one is an entitled parent story. So the house next door was turned into a daycare in the beginning of August, and I've never had any problems with them until a few days ago. In my country, the layout of the houses is completely different, and we have walls around our houses. IDK if this is relevant, but okay. I was hanging in the backyard listening to some music. It was very hot, and I wanted to get away from the electronics for a while, so I decided to just chill there. From my porch, I heard the kids playing and screaming, so I turned the music a little bit louder and figured it would be okay. My mom was at work, and my father was out of town for a few days, so it wouldn't bother anyone. Just for clarification, the songs were family-friendly, but they were mostly gay, so... I turned off the music and went inside as the sun was setting. That's when I heard the doorbell. I thought it was mail since I was expecting a package to be delivered. I answered it, and that's when I knew trouble was coming. Me. Who is it? E.M. Oh, I am E.M. My son goes to the daycare next door. I went outside and opened the gate, just to see the Karen of the Karens right in front of me. The woman had the typical Karen haircut and blonde, almost yellow hair. I just put a smile on my face and tried to be nice. Me. How can I help you? M. Hi, sweetie, I noticed you were listening to some music. It was you, right? I recognized the voice from the pitchy singing. Me. Um, yes, it was me. Again, how can I help you? E.M. You know, that wasn't an appropriate song for a young lady like you. Me. Pardon me? E.M. Sorry if this seems out of the blue, I am just trying to look after the kids, you know? The volume was really loud, and the lyrics were very inappropriate. Where is your mommy so that I could talk to her? Yes, she did say mommy as if I were five. For some ducking reason, I started laughing. Thought the situation was funny, since I've never imagined this kind of thing would happen to me. I have a history of laughing in very inappropriate situations. As I laughed, E.M.'s face would just get redder and redder, and she started to pound her feet on the ground and pout at me. E.M. What is so funny? Me. Nothing. E.M. Where is your mother? I need to talk to her about your behavior. Me. Well, my parents aren't home. And no, the lyrics were not inappropriate. It didn't even have curse words on it. And even if it had, I don't think my mommy would mind. E.M. Well, I am going to wait here until they get back, just to be sure. I don't want my kid and the others to listen to this bullcrap. Me. You'll wait here until my mother gets home? Why? E.M. I will if I have to. I just closed the gate on her face and went back inside. She started screaming, but I can't remember what she was saying. After a few minutes, I heard the doorbell again, but this time it wasn't her, it was the police. She called the cops on me and claimed that I was mentally harming the kids with my loud, inappropriate music. I explained everything to the officer, and he asked if he could hear the song. I showed it to him, and he said it was fine, and warned me to keep it down so I don't bother the neighbors. The EM kept starring at me as I closed the gate. I just smiled and waved at her as it closed. I am pretty sure I heard a very bad slur in my way inside. A few hours later, she harassed my mother in the entrance of the house, and also as my mom parked in. My mom just ignored her. If you guys want more entitled parent stories, I have plenty more. My aunt is the entitlement herself. Bye, sugar buns. Stay hydrated. Edit. I have an update. It just happened. I'm going to post it as soon as my break from school starts. Okay, my break is here. I was leaving my house to come to school when I saw one of the people that work at the daycare and decided to talk to them. I wanted to ask if it bothered them when I turned on my music. I know, I know, it's my house. I lived there my entire life. And I shouldn't not do things just because they are occupying the house next door. And I won't. I just wanted to talk to her because if I happen to encounter that woman again, I could at least say they told me it was okay. This is how the conversation went. Me. Good morning. I'm OP from the house next door. I wanted to talk to you about something. Them. Oh, hey, OP. What do you want to talk about? Me. Well, I had problems with a mom from your daycare because of my music, and I wanted to ask, does it bother you or the kids? Them. I can't tell you not to listen to music outside your house just because the kids are playing outside, so... Me. Okay, thank you. Have a great day. I was leaving, but they called for me. Them. Wait, I wasn't finished. I can't tell you not to do what you want in your own house, but I am allowed to ask you. OP. I don't want to have any trouble with you or your family, but it seems like lately you've been kind of loud. We can always hear you, and that makes the kids a little fussy. So please, if you could be so kind and turn it down a little bit, it would be great. 
I was furious. Keep it down? Being kind of loud? What about their kids? Can't you tell them to turn it down? I had the perfect answer for her, but I was late for school so I just said goodbye and left. <laughs> My family and I have never had problems with the people that lived in that house before they moved their daycare to that place, and they were loud. I won't stop doing I want in my house because a few people don't want me to. If they can complain about my noise, I can complain about theirs. I feel that I was asking for it when I came to talk to her, so this is totally on me. I could just let it go and forget the whole story. And that is what I'll do from now on. Forget it. Thank you for watching. I would really appreciate it if you could like the video and subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. We'll see you again tomorrow.